Welcome back to the Into Greatness podcast with Jason and Jolene. I'm Jason. She's Jolene right over there. Jolene, how are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you? I am great. It's Mother's Day on Sunday. Yeah. And it's Tuesday right now. Or whenever you're listening between this episode dropping and Sunday. It could be on Sunday. The fuck do I know? It's Mother's Day. <laughs> it could, <laughs> One way or it, the other. <laughs> it, could be, it could be last year. We're really sorry. Yeah. Just buy your mom something. <laughs> right? Why are you listening to us when you should be buying your mom a present? Yeah. Um, but we figured it'd be, it's, it's a good opportunity to talk about moms, relationships with our moms, or not having a mom. Yeah. Or, or there's a whole can of worms with Mother's Day that can come up. Much like, not quite to the degree as Christmas, because people don't get all batshit crazy about it. Because but. it's not about a specific person at Christmas time. So actually, there's a lot of grief and reflection that comes up. And there's so many mixed feelings when it comes to specific holidays, like birthdays, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, or Father's Day. Easter. Easter's not a specific person that you're uh, targeting, right? Unless you're highly religious. Unless, but still, you the gift you buy for that person does not represent what they mean to you necessarily. Oh. And um, you're not worried about rejection or not being good enough if that's not received that way. That's kind of what I'm thinking here. Ah. So when people think about, you know, Valentine's Day and what we talked about and <laughs> some of those things, a lot of that will, will transfer to Mother's Day, right? So there's a lot of pressure around Mother's Day. And when we say Mother's Day, we mean by a lot moms but also people who play mother-like figures in our lives right there's a lot of really important people that play those roles so we'll just kind of like use that term broadly but you know some of the things that come up there's so much pressure I don't want to get the wrong gift I don't want to not get um you know I, I just I, I a lot of times it's like I don't want the wrong thing to be perceived or there's a lot of pressure there pressure every holiday except yeah Easter and maybe Halloween Although Halloween has the costume thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If you're a kid, that can be kind of a... Yeah, yeah but I mean, we're talking... It's the same as like... We're talking core attachments here. This core is the person who pro like very likely birthed you and was in charge of raising you, self-sacrificed, probably is sitting on some resentments because of how their <laughs> life has changed and everything they've given you. Like, I am guilty of it. I have probably said to my kids at some point, like... I just finished making you dinner and this and this and this and this. I'm just asking for you to bring your backpack up the stairs. <laughs> so or as to much take your plate from the table and put it in the dishwasher, please and e thank you. Even on the counter, man. Like <laughs> so again, it's funny because you know, we talk about unconditional love and the need for things not to be based on conditions and behavior of things, but like nothing demands that more than fucking parenthood sometimes, right? So there's this mixed thing on Mother's Day you're supposed to be like celebrated and this and that but like how many moms out there are planning their own fucking mother's day or like doing whatever everything <laughs> needs to take place on mother's day right because now you're doing it for your own mother because you're an adult and you're like celebrating your own mom Ooh, that and then your own kids thing. yeah right right there's yeah. so there's so much there and then now like as a single mom like i remember last year for me I had my kids out of town at my son's hockey tournament and we were driving home all those little fuckers and they heard on the radio it was uh I, I had told them in the morning i said well it's mother's day and maybe we can stop at that like diner 97 or whatever and when westworld and i was like we can get some fun burgers there or something and my kids i couldn't believe them you guys they were like oh you're just telling us that so we'll be nice to you and I was like, what did I raise these heathens? <laughs> so Get out and walk. <laughs> yeah. Like tear dropped from my eye, right? Uh, and then it was like later they heard it on the radio and they were like, oh, you weren't lying, hey, mom. But like nothing really sunk in. I mean, they were like eight, well, seven and five, I think, or something, right? But still. Um, and then it was the next day, actually. My son came home from school Monday. And he said, Mom, I'm so sorry. It was Mother's Day and we didn't do anything for you. And he oh. felt so fucking bad. And do you and hold that over his head now? Never. Maybe, maybe and no, I never. told him, I said, you know what, Marsh? You're a kid. And sometimes kids need help from adults in their lives to do special things. And I said, that's why I go out of my way at Christmas to help you guys get your dad a, a present you would like. And the, for me, that will always be important. I am not buying a gift for um, my ex. I am helping my kids give their parent what they 
feel good giving so that they don't live with that guilt the next day either. Not that gift giving is about the guilt, but my kids genuinely care and they are really happy and excited to produce things and, you know, to give them and say like, look, it put my picture up on the wall. And that's why I fucking love schools and daycares when they do Mother's Day and Father's Day presents and Christmas presents because so many people out there don't have a grandparent to take them or another parent to say, oh, let's go buy mom a birthday present. Or a sibling old enough to do that. Or a sibling old enough, right? There's so many scenarios where that's just not possible, right? And I love and I'm so grateful for daycares and school teachers who give the kids, they empower them, okay? They empower the kids to be able to gift something that means something because we all feel good when we give somebody something that makes them feel good. And I want to take away like the the marketing and like materialism of things there because it really is like as as special as like a fucking pine cone ornament or whatever. But Sometimes it's something, those are the best, right? They are amazing. Yeah. I love those little potted plants or whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not a mom, so there's but no but <laughs> Father's Day, right? You know what though? Like, because we're not going to have an episode when Father's Day right. runs. Father's Day for me is easy. Give me a few hours by myself and I'm happy. Hmm. Like, literally, that's what it comes down to. You know, there doesn't need to be literally anything more than... The Griffin always brings something. Yeah. From school. And Jess is really good. Like, she gets something or just gives me that space that I really like. Or, like, she's thinking, what do you want for dinner? Like, you know, uh, ribs. Nice. So I have a rib dinner. Yeah. I don't have to barbecue. And I'm happy. Like, that's really it. And I think... So, part of it... Part of what makes a day like Mother's Day so hard... I think is the expectation of what that person wants out of it. And I grew up with a mom who was an, my adoptive mom who loved that shit. Right. And so there was expectation put on myself and even like my dad to do something to make it special. Yeah. Right. And we talked about that at Christmas too. That kind of person can ruin the shit out of what's supposed to be a pretty fun day. Totally. And actually, my desires aren't much different than yours, right? But there's a lot of judgment around, do you want to spend Mother's Day with your kids or without your kids? And there's so much judgment around that. They're yeah, really, mom shaming and there, all that There stuff, is. Right? And I mean, same thing with your birthday. And actually, like, yeah, yeah, I won't comment on that. But like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's wild. And I'm like, you know, spend the day how you want to spend it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because essentially, like, every day is mom's day kind of thing, right? Um, so it's not always about the things. And like, I would love it if I didn't have to cook on Mother's Day. That's a fucking dream. That, right? it, that is the dream in itself. I don't even care what it is, right? But if I don't have to worry about the meal that day, that's amazing right so it's not just about the gifts and stuff but yeah thinking about where is it acceptable and you know like food is definitely a love language of mine where I'm like that's how I'll show someone I'll make them a special dinner I'll you know like this is how I'm showing you like yummy I'll nourish you right yeah so um you know really kind of looking at some of those pieces and then how is that it's always a weird thing to receive so for a lot of women um you know we've talked about this around the valentine's episode receiving and like actually being okay receiving on those days right so a lot of times like oh no no it's fine oh no don't bother don't give me anything or whatever right Mm -hmm. for me mother's day is really weirdly conflicting and i think i talked about this again around uh that february mark because I had Valentine's Day, my birthday, and my daughter's birthdays. Um, And then around Mother's Day, it's always my son's birthday. He Uh. was born on May 10th. And I remember... I think he was born the day before Mother's Day. And I remember feeling really bad for him because I was like, shit many times he's going to need to share his birthday on Mother's Day and I will always back away and not take Mother's Day. Many years he didn't know it was Mother's Day, right? We just celebrated his birthday kind of thing. So that was always a piece I then felt bad about because I was like, he shouldn't have to share it and then worry about returning something on that day. And it's funny because that's my own issue of not wanting to steal his spotlight because let's think about it. As a kid, that'd be really fucking cool to share a day with my mom. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But it's funny how that was my immediate perception that I actively work through because I just don't want him to feel obligated on his own birthday that he's got to give things back and stuff too. But I also am, it's a, it's kind of a cool thing because I remind him that like he made me a mom. So when he was born, that actually created Mother's Day for me. So that's kind of a neat thing to celebrate too. It's funny, like I talk to a lot of moms and they kind of carry that weird guilt thing with them about that kind of stuff, right? They're supposed to be like this selfless 
ness to being a mom. I yeah. guess to being a dad too. Yeah. But I think I think the moms feel it more, right? Which is interesting. And I think that's a societal thing we put on moms. That's like the martyring wound. That is the, I mean, many women who are healing are healing that wound right there. Like I, my, my status and my pride is based on how much I can burn myself out and give everything of myself and take nothing because that's really what generations prior to us taught us. And that like, again, just goes back to sometimes the way things were. I look back to when my grandma was raising six kids on a farm and my grandpa was at war. There is no more self-sacrificing role to be in than that. Right. Um, um, I don't think she really chose it, but it was what it was, right? So, like, we're unlearning a lot of that. Um, and when most people that are on, like, an active healing journey are healing those types of wounds there, those stories, those narratives, for sure from that, like, societal level too, right? But it is. It's it's this expected. Um, and it's kind of like... It is what we're here for. We're very nurturing. We are the, you know, feminine energy that nurtures and caretakes and stuff. So it's kind of one of those things like, yeah, if you're the um, if you're the person who's good at this, then do that. If you're the person who's a good mechanic, do that. But it's like, yeah, but that doesn't mean that you can like burn that person out in that area or that's the only thing they can do. And that's kind of what happens in some of those roles, too. And I also like I really don't want to negate the fact that there's a lot of amazing dads out there. OK, um, but because it's Mother's Day, we're just talking about Mother's Day. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like, so again, dads just like do your best. And maybe it is about like ask your partner or your mom or your daughter, like how do you want to spend the day? So my mom and I juggle that all the time because again, it's my son's birthday. And then it's also her day for me to celebrate her, right? And then it's also my day to celebrate, which she will often do because she will help my kids or she will, you know, buy something nice for me or offer with dinner or something as a way to celebrate Mother's Day for me. But we're always checking in with each other. What do you want to do? And she has that same wound that I have around, oh, no, don't worry about me. We'll just do what works for, right? Mm -hmm. So then I'm overcompensating for that sometimes going like, no, we want grandma to feel really special. She's given for a lot of years, right? So you're always working with these dynamics. And it's funny because I do. I talk to a lot of women who are constantly in that dynamic, especially if they're the mom and they have a grandma and children. And they are right in the middle of like extending themselves in both those directions which makes them just as burned out as they would be on any other holiday or day of the week even sometimes totally. right so i think it's funny how there that hasn't changed <laughs> with all the movements in the world that have gone on it just hasn't shifted at yeah. all really right and so i think and that's a practice we have in our house i say to my wife what do you want to do for mother's day right and whatever she wants to do that's the way we're going to spend it. That's cool. And even when, like, you know, my, my adoptive mom was alive, TFB, if Jess wants to spend it this way, I didn't really like my adoptive mom in the end. So there's a whole that yep. whole other level going on there. But it was her day. Yeah, you were like, Jess comes first. Yeah. Mom and comes second. Jess wants to go off and do her thing. That's when I'll go up and spend a little bit of time with mom and bring Griffin quite often. And then we'll go do a dinner with. Right. Right. That's how we would do it. And now... Because I have my birth mom, but she's in Victoria. Well, that's a phone call. And mm -hmm. then, yeah. Totally. That was yeah. Easy way to solve it. Yeah. So the other things that these kind of days, and again, think about Father's Day as we talk about this, because we won't have an episode there, but it can bring up a ton of grief, right? So it can, and, and Jason's just kind of alluded this, it can bring up grief as to what kind of relationship do you have with that parental figure that maybe wasn't what you wanted it to be. And for many people, there's always components there, right? Where it maybe wasn't what you wanted to be. So you're grieving that. You could also be grieving the actual life of that individual too, right? and it's naturally just going to bring things up so here you are celebrating that you're a mom or you're celebrating somebody else or you're celebrating maybe your in-law's mother and you're also at the same time simultaneously experiencing grief right you are holding both these emotions I am celebrating but I'm also sad and grieving right make space for both of those experiences it's so common on these kind of holidays right so like how conflicting is that especially if you've got like a recent loss and you're like grieving maybe your mother's death and then your children and have these lovely cute little pictures that they've like made you and they're like mommy happy mother's day here's your burnt toast and whatever else and you're like sad and crying because you're missing your mom and how confusing sometimes that is for them and like I'm always super honest with my kids and stuff when things like that happen and if that were me I would say oh I feel so special and this has helped me feel so loved right now I'm so appreciative thank you and the same love you have for me I had for my mommy and I'm sad that I can't show her that right now I'm missing her right now and, and that's, kids that's the best thing too 
you do. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Otherwise, they're going to be like, my mom is sad, even though I'm giving her all these things. And that's a fucking conflicting message. That's a kid that's going to grow up thinking their gift is never good enough for whoever they give it to. So anytime we can be super transparent about what's happening and teach them to hold these things simultaneously, we are gifting our children with something generations prior to us have never, ever had right that one simple interaction can create a core memory of the look of disappointment on my mom's face when i handed her this beautiful gift mm-hmm. and it actually had nothing to do with the gift it might have been to do with the grief right just that one moment oh, just totally. yeah yeah absolutely and then, and then the other things are like if you have resentment and disappointment where your partner or somebody else in your life isn't showing up to celebrate that day who's actually getting the brunt of that are the kids getting the brunt of it cuz you're mad at dad for shit in the bed on mother's day right like be aware and like again speak up a lot of this is around um, being able to voice your needs right so what happens if your partner doesn't come up and say hey how do you want to spend the day there's so many people that sit in this passive aggressive energy that then feeds the um the negative belief that like i'm not good enough i'm not worthy people don't care see people don't care they didn't give a shit about mother's day because they didn't approach me about it i really help people empower people to um Speak up for their needs. And if they know that that's going to happen on that day, just start saying what you need from the get-go. It's yep. Mother's Day. I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to buy myself this. And that's what I'm doing. Yep. Or I need you to do this, this, and this, right? Otherwise, you will continually set yourself up to have that reaffirmed that, you know, you don't get the things that you're wanting because maybe that person couldn't read your mind or whatever, right? Exactly. And you know what? And people, not just about Mother's Day. <laughs> But need to do that all the time. For sure. Constantly, I think. Especially yeah. if, if things seem sort of one-sided. Yeah. In, in, in a relationship. And and if they're one-sided everywhere else, they're going to show up on Mother's Day, yeah. right? And you're just waiting for it. You're like, there's my other evidence in the file, right? right? And that's the thing where it's like, it, especially if you know that that's going to be the dynamic, right? Start rewriting your story. Like, like you know, I, start, I started buying myself my own flowers, right? And if somebody else wants to pick up on that, great, cool. If not... I'm going to buy myself the things I want and need, right? And it helps. Of course, there's always bigger issues to that and ways to speak out about that. But like those are little starting points where sometimes people just need the guts to do that. The, the um, you know, the courage to acknowledge this is something I want. So I'm going to let myself have it. That's also a big mom wound too, right? Like I'm not deserving of that item I want or it's too much money or, you know, like honestly, we're notorious for like, giving everyone like the good food that came out and taking the mangled one for ourselves, or the burnt one or that's fine I'll have that one like that is the classic mother wound too right it is it it totally is and that's where there is a disconnect between how moms are told they should be and then how dads are told they should be for sure and one of the active things I've done on my journey over the last few years is you know I when we How we love ourselves and how we treat ourselves is how we teach others to treat us, right? So if I rat bag my car and then lend it to you, you're going to drive it the way I drive it, perhaps, unless you have a strong moral compass that says, like, I'm going to take care of Jolene's car and I'm actually going to help repair it. When people come into our lives that do that, they're beautiful people. Don't ever let them go. Um, But really, for the most part, like we do teach others. So my kids would watch me run myself ragged i watched my mom do the same thing that's why i've been healing that and then she also has been healing that since i started healing it as well but like that is what that generation did like i never saw my mom self-care i never i mean my mom had empty fucking stockings at christmas time looking back as an adult like that breaks my heart right so looking at all of those kinds of things and now my mom's probably crying because she listens to our episodes (laughs) i'm almost crying mom um but like looking at all of that stuff like i didn't learn how to care for myself one of the things i want my girls and my son to see i want him to see this and want this for his partner and also if she doesn't have it help her find it but also recognize this is how someone deserves to be treated vice versa both ways right but like i want my kids to see me treat myself well nourish myself put myself first in some different ways right teach them boundaries because kids have no boundaries with parents especially moms i'm hungry give me your tit right and then we deal with that later in dating life (laughs) i'm hungry give me your tit you know (laughs) but like kids don't have any boundaries in the beginning of life and we eventually have to teach them boundaries like there were times where i couldn't even sit down with my food and my kids were all whining for this and that then they wanted seconds and it's simple things like you guys need to wait until I sit down at the table. I'm hungry as well, Mm -hmm. right? And little things like that. But man, 
for the longest time, my kids watched me have no boundaries and self-care around any of that because that is the way our household ran. So once I was able to take charge of my household and treat me better and they didn't see someone else treating me poorly as well, um, all those things start to change. And that is like one of the best things we can do as parents is, you know what? Yeah, when it's your day to celebrate you, celebrate you, let them celebrate you. When, when they have their birthdays, they feel like the shit. They got the balloons. They got this. They got that. And I am able to help them feel that way because I can buy the balloons. I can put it up while they're sleeping. I can do all that. So on Mother's Day, maybe initiate some of your own planning so your kids can participate in something to celebrate you that they might not have been able to do on their own. Right? Exactly. And as they get older, they will then be able to because the pattern has been set on i guess you could just say what the expectation is from mother's day yeah because right? kids can't go to a store they can't plan certain things unless they have somebody holding their hand through that essentially yeah. right yeah. so what if you were the person to initiate that and say these are the things i want to do to celebrate my day i love it when people claim their birthdays like that they're yeah. like it's my birthday and these are the things i want to do. do yeah and, and then you that. get yeah you get raw raw people that come beside you right yeah. um so you know think about some of those things what are ways that you can shift your perception of mother's day in terms of how you receive it or how you give it and what are some ways you can equip other people to be able to help offer you what you want that day like what would it be like if you just asked one person to, hey, you know what? I really wanted a couple hours to myself. Would you be cool watching the kids for this period of time? Or I really wanted to be able to do this. Would you be able to this? Or, hey, I want to take you somewhere. Where do you want to go? Yeah. Right? Whatever that looks like. But like, what could you do different on that day? And I'm honestly going to say, have some moments with yourself. Have some moments with yourself and reflect on, you know, for me, it's like, who am I as a woman and how have I changed since I've become a mom? And like, that is like the most identity transforming role I've ever had in my life. That's awesome. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. What is it like for you being a dad? Oh, it's, it's different. I think for dads, it doesn't change quite the same way. There's sort of, well, there is. There's more responsibility, uh, especially with a son. Mm-hmm. Um, there's this poem, I can't remember the author, but it's like a little fellow follows me. And the basic gist of that poem is, is that kid's watching everything you do and he wants to be just like you. So hold yourself accountable, behave in a certain way that you would then want your child to behave. And we're all going to fuck that up from time mm -hmm. to time. But when you do, then you take ownership of it. You know, you apologize and you say, this is the way we're supposed to be. So that's the big thing is just having, being now this real role model. Totally. To someone and, and remembering that all the time. Yeah, kids really do believe that their parents are heroes. Yeah. They really do. You can be a deadbeat Pete and they are going to think you are a hero. Like, remember that. Literally everything you do, they soak it up and put you on a pedestal for until you continue to show them differently. Yeah. But you start on that pedestal. The same way we talked about that empowerment piece, you start with that full bucket of empowerment until people dip from it, right? Yeah. Things and experiences dip from it. Children believe that you are like king shit a turd mountain from the minute that you're you know in their lives until you show them that you're not yeah right so as a parent i always try to show them that i still am yeah right? i think you do a great job jason thank you, thank you. yeah you do a great job as a mom thank you i really i uh yeah it has been the most uh transformative journey for sure the most difficult the most rewarding all of those things it's a privilege for sure yeah so let <laughs> us know in the comments how are you spending mother's day if you're a mom or how are you going to treat the mom in your life Totally. And what are some fun and creative Mother's Day activities, kind things, whatever. Just feed all of the examples out there because sometimes people are like lost for ideas. Help a brother out. <laughs> or in this case, a sister. Right? Right. Totally. There you go. Totally. Well, that wraps up this episode of the Integrateness Podcast. We're back next week with your next favorite episode. Until then, I'm Jason. I'm Jolene. Talk soon. Mm -hmm.